Emma Watson has this brand that she is this clever feminist. She is Belle and she is Hermione. And people were disappointed that she played Meg. Meg is a great character in the book, incredibly overlooked by many, sadly. This is where the 1994 film gets Meg right, and the 2019 film erases her entire growth. Reda Gerwig was like, oh, when Meg goes to Vanity Fair, she should get a day off for being this struggling person. She needs to enjoy herself. I think this was in the 2019 film guide. Gerwig was like, Meg settles for a poor man. It felt like Gerwig wanted Meg to marry a rich man, and sometimes I feel the same when she speaks about Joe and Friedrich, that Joe should have stayed with Laurie because Laurie was rich, and that doesn't make any sense because the film was made in 2019, not in the 1950s. Joe can combine career, family, and love, and Amy does as well. So they don't need to make this choice. You need to be either an independent spinster or be married and not to have a career, which is such an old-fashioned way to think about Little Woman because in Little Woman, the woman combined the two. But in the movie, when Meg goes to Vanity Fair, she doesn't have that growth. In the book, she is in the company of girls who treat her like a doll. They are not her friends. Gerwig says that we are just supposed to see her having fun or having a day off from her, quote, miserable life. But in the book, it is the vanity fair that makes her miserable. She is not treated well by these girls. They make her feel like she's lesser than them. In the book, Meg doesn't feel like her life is terrible. Even though the family is poor, the family is still pretty happy and pretty content. It is such an amazing scene in the 1994 film when you can see that Meg feels very uncomfortable in that place when the girls are dressing her up and trying to make her presentable. And then she has that discussion about the silk and how her father took a black child to their school and they had to close the school because of that. They don't buy silk because they are against child labor. You see how Meg is a strong character but all of that was entirely erased from Gerwig's film. This is interesting because the film guy talked about the scene, Meg's meltdown scene, with the silk, how she and John had a big argument. And then I heard later on that it was not in the final film because of Emma Watson's acting skills. And in general, James Norton had to carry her throughout most of her scenes. I felt that the film really pushed Meg and Beth aside in order trying to make room for Joe and Amy. This film really do it is the Joe show, but they put Joe and Amy in such a contrast between each other that it felt she was constantly trying to pit Joe and Amy against each other. I felt like Gerwig was trying to put some sort of commentary on it, and then she was like, oh, Meg and Beth are just air. They're just there kind of push on the story to push Joe and Amy stories along. It didn't feel very genuine, and I felt like we really did lose a lot with them as much as the actresses did try, and I liked Eliza Scanlon to play Beth. I have seen her in another movie, and I like her a lot. I think she did her best with Beth, but I hate to say, I didn't feel too much when she passed. It is one thing to be clever with your parallels or your visual quests. In the 1994 We see Joe wearing red dresses, and we see Beth wearing that later, and we see Meg wearing a blue dress, and later on we see Amy wearing it, but I sort of knew it was going to come because you had already set up the same scene when Beth is out. Joe wakes up, and she goes to the kitchen and sees Marmy with Beth, and the second time wakes up alone and goes to the kitchen and sees Marmy alone. 2019, it didn't have the same impact. There could have been an again. I think it is such a shame because one, we don't dive into either one of those sisters' emotional storylines exactly compared to Joe and Amy, and that is supposed to be one of the most heart-wrenching moments in the book, and we lose that. It felt like Jerwig had, in a way, favorites, but then also torturing those favorites. You just want them to suffer because, I don't know, that is what makes great art. I do feel like their characters were pushed aside. Somebody said that the guy that plays John, James Norton, I like. He is a British actor. He has been in quite a few things. He was in the most recent War and Peace with Lily James. Hello, friends. 
It is Nina from the Little Woman Podcast. Just to let you all know that the Little Woman Podcast episode transcripts are now available as books. You can find them as paperbacks and ebooks. They are wonderful reading for all the fans of Louisa May Alcott. You can find all the links from the description. And now, back to the show. I had seen a lot of people in his fans who were very excited to go to see the movie. And then he was barely in it. And when he was there, there wasn't much that he said. I agree. I think he is a great actor, but it is like with Laurie or with Frederick. Gerwig doesn't do anything with the male characters. They are tossed aside. You are supposed to see these couples working on equal grounds with one another. They did not feel very equal partnerships in the way they are supposed to. I think again about the 1994 version, there was an interview in one of these special features documentary commentary when someone said that they did not want it to be just the story of the March sisters, but everybody, and it should be everybody. Gabriel Byrne said, when I was growing up, my mother and my grandmother read us Little Women. I grew up loving it so much, so it is not just a girl's book when you only focus so much on the sisters and you don't give any of the male characters their true story arcs. You are ruining it. There are quite a few great male characters in the story. Chris Cooper is a great actor, but I barely saw his and Beth's relationship. I feel like Gerwig tried to torture who she feels are her favorite characters. She tortures Joe, who she says is her favorite character, to the one who she says she identifies with, but then makes Amy a hero. It has a feeling that she is not a big fan of Amy. I am so bewildered by her thought process. That is why this movie is dead last on our list. One of my friends said that when Beth died, she didn't feel anything in the movie because it did not show the close relationship that Joe had with Beth. When I watched the movie, I thought that Beth's death was only used as a vehicle for Joe to write the novel. Then in reality, we know that Louisa May Alcott's sister, Lizzie, died when she was in her 20s. It was not in any way start of Joe's writing career. Her sister's death in the book changed Joe to become a better person because Beth's death leads to Joe having an identity crisis. She begins to revalue her own life after her sister passes away. That was entirely missing in this adaptation. I think it is a perfect scene in the 1994 film when Beth dies and she and Joe have that last chat together. We know on a writer's Joe goes to the window and watches this dark, gloomy autumn landscape. Branches are hitting the window and she is looking at the shadows in the night. Then she goes back to bed and she's dead. Joe's whole life has changed. It is an amazing scene in the 1994 film, but there's nothing like that in the 2019 film. 49 and 2018 films did Beth's dead also pretty well. One of my friends said quite recently, you know that scene when Friedrich comes to court Joe in the 2019 film? Joe came downstairs and shuffled bread into her mouth and my friend said, Joe is supposed to be about 28 now. She has a guest. She lives in her parents' house. 2019 Joe doesn't do any work there. She just hangs out. She is kind of rude. She doesn't thank her mother. She behaves like she's a 15-year-old. I remember this article that I read about Louisa May Alcott. It was based on one of her letters that she wrote to her fans. And the fan was like, I was so sad that Joe didn't end up with Lori and that Joe had to grow up. And Louisa May Alcott answered her. She wrote, why to think that Joe is 15 or stays as a child when she is 30 in the end of the novel? Why people think that she's beautiful when she's written to be tall and lanky? That pretty much sums it up. Absolutely. I hope that one day we will get another adaptation that will wash out the bad taste in our mouth. I will wait for that one. That was the last ranking chat between I for now. Thank you everyone for listening. In Christina, take care and make good choices. Bye.